Hello, everybody. It's on that day. It's not a motive of what you were really true, idiot. Hello, everybody. Uh, want to greet you and welcome you people to today's program. Um, Sunday Adelaide here to, uh, doing, doing this program with uh, uh, my <laughs> one of one of my most ardent followers in Nigeria, uh, Okoli Ofobuike. Ofobuike is uh, uh, is a young man that is full of fire, energy, and illumination. He had decided not to walk the, the path of mediocrity as the people of his generation or the generation before him. He has decided to, uh, to pave a new path for himself and to lead a generation of God seekers and to revolt against the ungodliness that are thriving in the nation where he found himself. And it is for this kind of people, like uh, versus Joshua generation. So um, this kind of people, when I most of the work I'm doing now, I'm more concerned that I'm more concerned that people like him, who are in their twenties or thirties, will get the essence and the value of um, this movement that we are spearheading. If this generation, this younger generation will get it, then maybe there will still be hope for Nigeria and for Africa at large. But it is thanks to people like Ofobuike or Koli that I personally persevere and keep on pushing to do the right thing and to believe in the future of Nigeria. And um, I believe also that apart from uh, Ofobuike and a few people who are able to watch me and follow me right now, that when I come and you know, and I'm on ground, and my messages are more readily available. I want to believe that I will discover even more people like Ofobike uh, in the universities, in the high schools, and some of them are just being given birth to right now. By, by the time I come, they will have been ready to accept and receive the 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 message. So please go and share this message, and go and invite your friends and family members, as I. Uh, welcome my friend and brother, Okoli Ofobike. How are you, bro? I'm doing, doing my best, sir. Doing well, sir. Thank God, sir. I'm, I'm not sure you are doing well. Can anybody do well in Nigeria? <laughs> yes, who can do well in Nigeria? When you know what to do, you have to fight against the odds and, you know, make the most out of, out of the situation on ground. And um, make, make the most out of the situation on ground. I, right. I'm going to make a comment now, but uh, you don't need to support me, but you can still share your opinion. Uh, because most people on the platform, they disagree with me on this, uh, on this subject. Uh, it's on the subject of, just before I came now, I, was, I just came back from court, so I'm on my way down, I quickly check my Facebook page. And I discovered that uh, somebody had shared some pictures from Kano, where President uh, Buhari was doing campaign. You know, when I saw that picture, for some reasons, I got hope, more hope for Nigeria. Because I think there were, I've never seen a crowd like that in my life. Maybe 3 million, 5 million people. It was incredible. Now, he had about... Two million people when it was in Shokoto, but this one that I saw today was much more than in Shokoto or Borno, and I I just found hope that when there is such a desperation in the land, when people are so desperate, when people are so ready to go to the I mean they, they're almost killing themselves, and in Shokoto some of them kill themselves, in Borno some of them kill themselves. 
I mean, the kind of crowd this man is pulling is just making me to have hope that, you know what? Because whatever Buhari is giving them is nothing compared to what we are bringing. We are going to bring real deliverance, even though I'm supporting Buhari and a lot of people are angry at me because of this. And, uh, you know, people are abusing me from morning to night. But you, they, don't, they, don't, they don't know that uh, I'm a person that cannot be stopped because of those abuses. But, you know, yeah. I saw those pictures and the video. It made me to be positive because I'm going to get to those guys. Those young people that are running after these politicians, they need greater light. They need greater, greater illumination than political one that they are getting right now. And they are not getting much. But we are going to, we are going to, uh, we are going to give them deliverance by the grace of God. Well, I don't know why I started Amen. with that, but I guess because you give me hope, and the political rally also gave me hope. <laughs> there is hope, sir. There is big hope, sir. There is hope for the country. There is hope. But the country, the country is highly polarized right now, yeah, because of the political debate. Yes, yes, yes. There is a big division. Yeah, there's a big division in the country because of the um, um, the um, politics. Some people are deciding not to participate because they have lost hope already in the leadership. So some people just say, I don't have, have you gotten your PVC? I don't have PVC. I don't care. Even though if I have it, I've dumped it and I don't, I'm not interested. So everybody's just trying to fight for their survival, basically, where I am. Everybody's just trying to see that there's a um, house over there, there's roof over their head, there's food to eat, and they just have the basic amenities to push through because that, because the, the feel that leaders have, you know, they have, they have lost hope in them. They don't, no matter who is there, they, people already believe that no matter who is there, nothing is going to happen, nothing is going to show up. So let's just focus on our business, let this uh, election do everybody. Most people here say, election, make it come, make it go. So we go, <laughs> so we can focus on our business because election is like a distraction. Everything is like, Everything is not going like it's, uh, it's supposed to go because everybody's talking about election, election. So everyone wants to let the election come, let the election go, so that life will continue as normal. So basically, that's what people are just, you know, around there are just thinking about. Uh, say, let this election, when it, what date is it? February, what? Is it 14th or 16th? Okay, let it come and go now. Then yeah, it's it a big, starts. it's a big, big distraction. Uh, I could tell yes. that it's a big, big distraction with all the crowds. I just wonder. I, how come all these people are leaving their businesses and their jobs just to yeah. go to rally? That is, exactly. that is mind blowing. The other day I was at the shop, so APC came with their boss, so they were, just, they were sharing items, satellite something. You need to see the crowd. <laughs> Everybody ran out of their shops, took fighting for maybe 1,000 naira or 2,000, they were flinging or so everybody wanted to grab their own and you know, but some people that were lighting knew that you know, we also need about this, so your small bony crowd were following, following their motor as fast. You can imagine when they started from, people followed them until they showed that the bus was empty of all the gift items <laughs> and everything. For the <laughs> if you stamp on something, there is all you get at there is hunger in the place. land. There is real hunger in the land, though. real hunger. People just want to use this election time and whatever the politicians are giving, to use it at least and see how they, how they can start up something and survive for the meantime. So you need to see the crowd. They will just do like one thing, something that is not up to 2,000 or 5,000 naira. People are, people are rushing, rushing and go, ah, you're like, this is not that valuable. It's not as if they threw iPhone or something. Just DSTV, um, DSTV satellite dish or something they threw. And then 20, 30 people are rushing to fight for. They will someone catch it, they will draw the person out and pick it and throw you away and, you know, so yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> This well. <laughs> wow, Nigeria, my beloved country. I can't wait to get back to that place. We are going to, you wait, we are going to bring real hope and deliverance to that country, I bet you. Amen. Amen. I don't know if Amen. you have read the book I wrote. Uh, I wrote it because of this election. And actually, I've not been bad announcing it. I was supposed to have been announcing it. It's called The Beauty in Nigeria's Diversity. Mm, no, you've you've no, not no. seen that one? Okay. It's all about Nigeria and about the beauty okay. of Nigeria and the diversity of Nigeria and the greatness of Nigeria. And, you know, I'm talking about different tribes and different, all the things that are unique to Nigeria that 
only in Nigeria you can find. All the things that can make Nigerians proud. And hey, that, bro. yes, and why every Nigerian must be glad that it belongs to Nigeria. Because those, the, in that book, you will read things that only Nigerians can be proud of them. But Nigerians don't know. <laughs> Nigerians are looking for opportunity to fly out to. All of my examples, small opportunity, they are gone. They have taken off. Yeah. Nobody wants to stay. We encourage them that it's a country that there's still hope we can do one or two things. Say, forget all those things. Let me fly out. When I get there and get it. <laughs> tell them about the Uncle Sister. Then you, go to, then you get there, the Uncle Sam sister will trap you. Say, forget Uncle Sam. When we get there, let's go on. So everybody's just looking for opportunity to escape from the from the country. Nobody wants to stay here. Nobody wants to. They don't, know, they don't even know what is Uncle Sam. If they had known what is Uncle Sam, they would know that Nigeria is even better in that sense than, yes, than yes. Europe. People just want to escape. People believe that when you escape, that's when life becomes better. When, there's, when you escape, that's when you begin to enjoy things. Look, but they have look, to make their own choices. Pakaji, you now. I'm looking behind you now. I'm seeing all these books behind you. Okay, sir. Yeah, will be really nice. And you know, I, I think it's like you are. It's like you have a bookstore. So these books, quite a number of books, all these books, you are just reading them for yourself. Yes, I read them for myself. Then I also have blogs where I share with them, share share the ideas I get from them. Then on WhatsApp, on WhatsApp, so I try and share share with the people about the things I learned. And sometimes people come around and then I could learn some of the book to read for themselves. But basically it's for my own because I feel that the greatest challenge I have now is to make this um, knowledge flesh in me. So that's why I'm really interested in getting the books, taking out time to sit and study them and really get, in, get into them and let them to get into me. Because I believe that when, is the, when the world becomes flesh, that's when you can really produce so that's why, I'm, that's why I try to get a, num a number of, as much as I could get and take out time. And then I've read some of them once, once, but I still say, no, it's not enough. I still need that time to sit down and study and, you know, really let them to di and digest. Because wanting to just come out and say, okay, this, 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 but is, as that thing become flesh in you, you could come and quote it, but I think that's what, that's basically the, that's basically what um, your secret or something that helps you because, I see that most of the things you are sharing have become flesh in you. Nobody can take them from you. So you are able to talk about, talk here and talk there and talk about different things. But, you know, those things are become, they're not things I just, you're just saying, you know, you know, trying to, these are things that have, they are, they are flesh in you. So I think that if I also want to do and produce similar results, then I need to take that part too and, and make the world flesh, make the world flesh in me. So, that's why I get those books and I sure that I studied them as much as I could. Do you know that I spoke about how to make blood, our uh, word flesh in the series, How to Know God Through the Bible? Yeah, so you, 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 you could go back to that series, How to Know God Through, oh. the, through the Bible. Right. Yes, I did, okay. like, I did like maybe eight or so messages on how to make the flesh big. How to make the world become flesh. How to make the world flesh. Yes. Okay. But one of the books I'm seeing behind you there is How to Make Nigeria the Greatest Country in the World. Yes. I don't know if you have read it. Yes, I've read the book. Every, like, all the books, the ones on Nigeria, yeah, I took my time to read them cover to cover because I'm in Nigeria. So I really want to know any, uh, get any information that will help me to see how things could be um, better in Nigeria. So I've read the book, How to Make Nigeria the Greatest Country in the World, where you spoke about different people, different Nigerians all over the world. They are making, they are doing exploits, talking about the, um, the Mafidon family, who are talking about different people who are in different places who are making Nigeria uh, proud. And that if we can, the government can harness those resources and put them in the right position, they could come together and transform our country and you know make our country great. That if they're doing to those countries and excelling in those countries, why can't they come and to Nigeria and also help us and do it in Nigeria? So I read the book out to make Nigeria the greatest uh, country. A Nigerian who read it said he was planning to check out of the country as well until he read that book. And when he read okay. that book, he said he has never read a book that made him so proud of Nigeria. So what he did is that he ordered like maybe 20 of the books and started and went to 20 schools 
and started groups, by no study wow. study group for people just to read that book because it said it, that book every Nigerian must read it from primary school to secondary school to university. Wait, do he, is, why do, he said he said that thing that book did something to him as a Nigerian that he, for the first time he started being proud to be a Nigerian. Why why do you is there anything in that book that could make that kind of thing to happen to someone? Uh, yes, because basically most of the youth don't think that um, Nigeria is in. They don't, we, think, we don't think that we have uh, Nigerians that are doing great things. Everybody just think that, you know, like someone came to the, uh, the shop where I stayed the other day and it's someone reading a book. Uh, the book was about uh, uh, what which people do and keep secrets, something like that. The title, so you saw the title of the book and say, oh, I said, oh, for what are you reading? The guy has made his million and he's giving you the book. Uh, you go, man, you want to deceive yourself, John? Drop the book one side. So, you know, this guy is like, what? what, what book, the, you guys don't make money, you don't print the book, don't give it. Wait till all this book where they read is where you don't, they know be here you did. I bet, forget this thing where you did read your soul. Basically, we just think that, you know, we think, um, we don't see Nigerians, we just see everybody just surviving, everybody just trying. So, people have their own, um, people have their own standard. Of, so, everybody, most, and the youth are thinking, Okay, those people who have a lot of money, and especially I think that most youths are only looking at the entertainment world. So that's the view they have. Those people who are making entertainment, the whiskey, and all those people. So people are not thinking about labor as a source, as a way to get um, income or something. People are thinking that, you know, you just have one talent, you just crack one joke, or you just have one luck, and then the money comes in. So basically, everybody just wants to, everybody just wants to be happy, fun, but no serious work, no serious labor, and just, you know, have what, just, you know, have, have money and have, you know, just, you know, be happy and be excited about, like, so basically when you see, when you see someone that is really serious and taking things really serious and disciplining himself or do something like, this guy in our old school, oh, this guy, no, 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 waiting to happen now, you be old school, you be old cargo, you know, what are you doing? You are kind of, they don't see you as, you know, as, as part of the progressives. They don't see, so I was even surprised that he could tell me that, why are you reading a book? That you know that I was still thinking that the people still think that that there's no value in reading books. So when he spoke to me, I, so I sat with him down and showed like I corrected that, <laughs> corrected that um, that, um, that, that no faulty no that notion. Yeah. When I took time, I, when I said, okay, let's even drop the book. The mathematics you read at school. If I, let me should I ask you a question for mathematics? He said, I asked me. I drew Pythagoras triangle for him. I said, yeah, so find find x. You cannot find X. I uh -huh. said, you, you went to school. I said, mathematics that they taught you in school, you cannot do Pythagoras theory. Only simple one they even taught you. You can't answer the question. You are challenging someone that, I said, make I not hear your mouth again. Make you just keep quiet. And if I need to what they tell you, you also listen to me. You understand? Because you don't even, the things you are taught in school, you don't know it. So why are you now, you know, trying to, I, I when I was really speaking to him, he, he sat back to himself and reason had to reason things back to himself again. To confirm what you are saying, uh, you know, I have many books and, uh, in, on different topics, but the least purchased books and the least read books are the books <laughs> that ask Nigeria on them. <laughs> they are the books. In fact, the ones we have, I sent to Nigeria, the books I sent to Nigeria, the distributor, Shioma, is complaining that all these Nigerian books, I don't know what to do with them, but because they are the only ones remaining. The remaining, all the rest are gone, but the Nigerian books, nobody is buying them. <laughs> <laughs> but I think some of the ones that are available, because I have a, I had a friend that came to me and he wanted to get those Nigerian uh, titles, but we're not in the market. I think they maybe they're just with them. Um, so I was telling him that if we could, um, if we, they could check the market and find those, but I think people are really interested in getting, but Nigerian books are not like in, inside every corner of the market. So most people don't know about those um, Nigerian books because my friend really wanted to get um, um, the books, all the books on Nigeria. But when he checked that bookstore that I bought some of those books, they were not there. So and he asked the man if he knew and he said he didn't send any of them in the market. So I think if okay, those, um, Nigeria Yeah, because this one price, it was not market. It is with this lady. She, she didn't take them she, to market. Uh, she just keeping them in her house. Uh, so I think if they really enter the market, people are going to purchase them. Because mm -hmm. he, my friend, he wanted to buy those, um, buy the books from Nigeria. Okay, out of he the books, kept, out yeah. of the books from Nigeria, which we, you know, what are the ones you would like to? Uh, uh, maybe you want to talk about all of them. What did you get from each of those books, Nigerian titles that you read? 
Okay, the first Nigerian title um, I read was um, only God can save Nigeria. What a meet. <laughs> so I think that that one is a very something that's going to help all Nigerians, and it helped me personally because I saw in that book that what like you there's a, there's a question you put in that book. How can God save a country whereby how many percent? I think you said 70 or 90 percent of the population are already saved. So if we have a large percent of people saved already, why are we now begging our God to come and save the country again? So why are we were not why his representatives, why he has Christians, we he our body is his temple, we he lives in us, he abides in us, and we have such a number of people, we have churches in every street, and then we're still calling on God to come and save the country. How else does he want to save? So God is kind of like handicapped. He can't he already has his people there. So if he's going to do anything, he's going to do things through the people who are there. So if we're there and we're not working, we're not doing, we're not managing um, the country, we're not transforming the country, then how do we want him to come and save the country? If this country was a Muslim country or something, we could say, okay, let's go and and, 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 and breed Christians and bring people who are Christ-like. But in this country, we have so much of them, but still yet, we are still having a lot of um, um, problems and a lot of um, ungodliness in our society. So uh, that book really challenged me to see that, yes, we should not wait on God to come and save our country. We should take, each of us should take responsibility for whatever sphere of earth that we have bought in for and begin to establish God's will and God's plan in those places. That's one book. Next. Okay, so the next is How to Make Nigeria the Greatest um, Country in the World. That's the second book I read about Nigeria. And in that book, uh, it was talking about different prominent Nigerians who are doing great things in different co uh, different places, different countries, and how they are leading, they are tra 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 uh, blazing the trail in those countries. And then if those Nigerians and Nigerian uh, Nigerians and, and Nigerian spirit, spirit helps us that wherever Nigeria uh, Nigerian goes to, he actually gets there and succeeds and does great things and you know is successful in what he's doing. So if we can make the environment kind of friendly and helpful that people can come here and 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 uh, you know excel in whatever they are doing that we could make nigeria one of the greatest countries where we have all we have what it takes to make nigeria we have the people we have the resources we have the human capital to uh, to do to make the country a great country so that's um the summary of what i got in that book on how to make nigeria the greatest country in the world did you read nigeria and the leadership question no i've not read i've not read that one all right, okay, those are the two books you read about Nigeria. Yeah, those are the two books. Those are the two books I could access. Two books I read. Okay, Nigeria. look look for the Nigeria and the leadership question. The leadership question. Yeah. But I think I've listened to some reviews on Nigeria and leadership question, but I've not read the book. Yep. Now I just released a book this week. It's called Moses Generation yeah, versus absolutely. Yeah, Joshua Generation. What do you think about that title? Yes, I've, I've listened to one of your teachings on that title, the Moses generation and the Joshua generation, uh, whereby you talked about the passing generation and this new generation that is coming, which is the Joshua generation. We should not do things like the Moses generation. We'll do things differently. We'll have a different approach and perspective towards things and think along those lines that you spoke about in Moses and Joshua generation. Yes, because this... Uh book is for people of your generation and people it doesn't matter what age somebody is in you could be uh, 70 years old and still belong to the joshua generation uh, the difference is that the josh the moses generation are the generation of people that always depend on miracles and on manna from heaven to fall they are always always going to church to ask for miracles to ask for blessings to ask moses or the men of god to pray for them or you know, they are the kind of churches that we have today. People are going to church to receive something. They only know the face of, and they, they only know the eyes of, I mean, the hands of God, but they don't know the face of God. But the, 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 the Joshua generation are people who say we don't need manna, manna to come from heaven anymore. Because during the time of Joshua, nothing was falling down from heaven. Nothing was, no manna was falling. It, you know, but then without the manna, they were able to build a country and they were able to make the promises of God to come to pass in their land. And they made it so that, you know, Israel could become a land that is flowing with milk and honey. It is now time for us to raise up that generation of people 
who will take responsibility for the land and make our land to begin to flow with milk and honey rather than waiting for something to, or for God to always uh, supply and bring miracle. So it's a generation that doesn't depend on miracle, but create, they become the miracle. They use their own hands to create miracle rather than, rather than uh, you know, expecting somebody, so miracle workers, to come and be making miracles for them. And, but then the, that generation died in the wilderness. The Moses generation died in the wilderness. But this new generation, they, they constructed the, the bridges, the, 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 the agriculture, the industries, and they made they, they 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 brought about civilization and development to their to their land. So it is this kind of generation that we need to redeem Nigeria, bring about the you know, regeneration of the country, you know, re revive the economy, and you know, be able to uh, bring Nigeria to civilization and, uh, in the Committee of Nations. So that is the big difference between the. So this book is actually about two generations of Christians. The generation of Christians that we have right now, which is the Moses generation, I want to believe that it's a passing generation, and the future generation of Christians that we need to be able to build the country, which is the Joshua generation. So that's what this book is about. It's calling forth people, a new generation of Christians, a new generation of churches, a new generation of leaders that will be able to become the builders of a new nation. That's, that's what that book is about. But it's not yet in Nigeria. Unfortunately, it's not yet in Nigeria. Unless yes, you know yes, somebody who lives, who lives outside of Nigeria who could get it for you. Uh, it will, but it will be on Okada Books next week. Okada Books? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's, why do you decide to review this Insulted by Ungodliness? Well... I wanted to share to uh, review review a book that when I'm when I when I'm discussing about the book, I really know that at least to a certain percentage, I've made that word flesh. But I think for me, that's really I don't want to just you know talk about a title or something that you know I just is just in my library or something that I've sat with, looked at, and you know I'm involved in because I'm even try, I'm working on a book that is on the same on the similar direction with this too. So I mean around that and circle. Talking about the insulted about godliness. I'm, I titled my own um, Productive Anger. Beautiful. That's what I titled it. Beautiful. Productive Anger. So, what, okay. touched you, what touched you most about this one? Insulted by ungodliness. Hmm. I start by saying that, you know, we think that anger is always negative. So, but, you know, for instance, like when I started my own um, um, program, started speaking about those things, everybody's kind of like, oh, you keep quiet. What do you know? What are you saying? What are you talking about? And every single thing. But when you begin to sit down and, and study and read this book, you see that from those things that the changes that have happened in the countries and the changes that have happened around the world were most times started from people who were, were not happy, they're not satisfied about what's going on in the society. They, not, they, they, they didn't like what they were saying. They were insulted by it. They saw that, see, these things cannot keep on going like this. Enough is enough. They, 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 they were really interested to see that this thing should stop. That we can't just be silent about it or just, you know, to just uh, ignore it or to be complacent towards the see that, okay, it's nothing serious. It's not a big issue. Let's just leave it, you know. Let's just do something there. Let us focus on our own business. So, but you see that when you are, when you feel insulted, when you feel angered about whatever is happening in society, it's, it's an opportunity for you to bring a change and to rescue people who are being, who are being oppressed or who are, who are, being, um, who are being oppressed oppressed in society. So I think that, that's, that's one, one thing that um, challenged me in this book, being insulted by ungodliness. There are a lot of heroes, there are a lot of people that I spoke about in this book. What, what are yes. the ones that really inspired you? Who are the few people that you will say inspired you from the book. I was talking about uh, Martin Luther. Martin Luther. He, um, he that wrote the 95 Thesis. Because while I was writing my own, I was trying to read through those uh, the heroes. Then when I studied uh, and I read about uh, Martin Luther, and I took time to read the 95 Thesis. And I saw that in those 95 Thesis, 
he was speaking the same things that still they was addressing the same things that are still happening even right till now in Nigeria especially <laughs> in Nigeria especially and I for myself I still attend the Catholic Church so I'm still seeing the very same um, things that he's still speaking still ongoing in the in the in the Catholic Church so I'm one I'm, I'm saying that wow maybe we need to make people to see or I need to maybe um, print out the 95 test and distribute or something because it seems like people don't even know that he spoke about those things or something but people are still involved um, involved in who well, are still falling for it they could come to the, uh, the, the mass one day and then you know take ordinary bottle water packet of bottle water that is sold for 500 naira and one bottle water is 50 naira and they could say this is holy water Oh yeah, come, let's do Thanksgiving or do offering. And they'll put that bucket of water on the table. And we will come and giving their money, 1,000, 2,000, to collect just one bottle. And this is madness. This is water you could go outside and buy from a shop for 15 naira. And then because they said they have prayed on it or something, and then you are, are giving out your whole this thing just to get it. So I'm seeing that this same, the very things that, or is it because maybe there are, not, there are no Martin Luther's of today? Because or people have been silent about it. So the very same things that he was addressing, I myself took it on myself that I wrote a, a letter to my parish priest. And I told him from my own heart, I said to him, I said, see, what we are seeing today was not what I knew when I was young, as a young Catholic. Because when I was a young Catholic, mass was mass. When it was time for giving the sermon, the priest came to give the sermon. There was nothing extra. There was just one offering, and economy was fine that time. Economy was good that time. This was back in 2000. Was, you know, everything was good. Nobody was complaining. Nigeria, things were fine. My father himself, who did not, was able to go to school, was schooled by the Catholic Church. But today, you cannot finish Mass without at least three offerings. The standard, the minimum is at least three, three offerings. They are copying, I, they are copying the, the Pentecostals now. They are copying them real good. In fact, what happens now is that they invite priests from other parishes that have the Pentecostal spirit or something like that. So priests come from other parishes to come and anchor programs. That was not happening before. So this priest to come, one came the other day, and then he, because we because have first We have the first. idea in Pentecostal now, guest speakers. So you must have your own guest speakers. <laughs> guest speakers. I'm telling you. So this priest came one day, and then this was second mass. Second mass, and they were doing a launching of a, of a banner or something. They were launching the banner or something. So this priest came and he anchored the program for the first mass. And that first mass, what they do is that they tie the banner with rope. So what they do is that for the launching, people will come out and give like 50,000 50, naira, 100,000 naira. They will call at least three people will come out and give 50,000 naira. So until those people come out, they will not cut and unveil the team of the year. Uh -huh. They won't unveil the team. That's it. It's tied and held together. People must come unless they will not cut that rope. So finally, they called. People came out. Then they cut the rope, opened it. That was first mass. Second mass again, they tied the banner again. And the man, the priest was not saying, I don't know the team of this year. But if the team of this year is victory, I said, Ah, ah, you are you very the first mass now. You know the team. He said, But if the team there is victory, if the team of this year is wisdom, wisdom will be your essay, Baba. You already unveil, you know what is in there. Just tell us the thing. Until people came out again and came on, and the same thing told the same man saying, I don't know the team of this year, but if the team of this year is this, <laughs> oh, this year you'll be thinking. I, ah. I, said, but I never I happening? never knew that a Catholic church would be having team of the year. Team of the year is the discovery of Pentecostals now. They have team of the year, team of the bazaar, team of <laughs> team of everything. <laughs> They are, not, they, are not, they, are not, they are not they are not joking here at all. Though. It's very like this place because here is a business area. They are not smiling with it at all. They are they are they are, they are and what I was telling the priest in my letter was that see, upon all these offerings you're raising, still here there's no adult education. Now I'm People getting are, I'm getting I'm getting to to, to to the full conclusion. I've always been saying that there is no church in Nigeria. But I I was always referring to the Pentecostals and the charismatics. But I didn't know that it has, if it has reached the Catholic, it means it means Anglican has gone long time, and Methodist is swept long time. If it now Catholic is doing it, then I know there is no more church in Nigeria. Finito. I wish I knew. I'll talk about. I would have showed you the bulletin. We have a bulletin each Sunday bulletin. I would have showed you the bulletin for last this Sunday that just passed. Inside the bulletin was prayer for first fruit offering. If no, it's not possible. No, it's not possible. I'm. 
If I could go to my room to get the bullet, no, I believe you, you now. I, for, I believe you for, for first fruit, first fruit offering in Catholic John. In inside the bulletin, the weekly bulletin <laughs> Sunday, prayer for first fruit offering. The even distributed offering of the members of the church. The envelope is tied to first fruit offering, which is happening on Sunday. This uh, Sunday now, the envelope. Each person must take one copy, and you must. And, and they preached it on that Sunday. That there don't is, give there is this. There is this thing they say in Yoruba language. I, I can't remember now, but it means since I remember one phrase, the last word. I don't remember the beginning. They always say something baje. Do you know do, do your Yoruba language? Either it's the word as poet or I say, oh yeah, yeah. I think they say. Is it is that the way to say? Don't spoil. Yeah, it means <laughs> what don't spoil. Don't don't spoil. <laughs> Things don't scatter. Uh-uh. Don't spoil. So that extent. To that extent, telling you, sir. Distributing first fruit offering envelopes around the whole for everybody to participate in. I even went to the charismatic because we we're having a business seminar. I went there for a program. So when I went there, they were doing prayers. I have the prayer point there. They said, pray to, for God to give you the grace to be a faithful titan, face, faithful, faithful. Or oh, I say, Abba. Uh uh. It's now a prayer point again. So everybody knew was praying. And, 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 so, about, so I, from what, from Martin Luther's, um, um, uh, his own uh, account, I think first, we've been insulted. We have to f allow ourselves to be uh, angered and insulted by the ungodliness we see. And then what, was, what I saw was that we have to be productive about it, not just angry and, and complaining about it, but doing something about it. For Martin Luther, he just he was angry about what he saw. He saw that the, um, priests were taking advantage of the people and make, using them to, for in, selling indulgences and making money from it. They were corrupt practices. So not only did he keep quiet to speak about it, he sat down and wrote his 95 thesis. So he used his own, his, as, a, as, a, as a priest, as a theologian, he used that um, gift to work on something, work on a document, which, is which, which spoke and which he wanted to document out to the, um, to, I think, Pope or something. But it, it went viral. It, it spread everywhere. So the same thing with us, whatever, um, a, whatever resource we have, whatever talent we have, whatever training we have, we use that to address that, that insult. We start to address that corrupt practice, that ungodliness that we see around us. So that's what I saw. The 95 the thesis that he gave was so detailed about different things. And when he went to the part where he was talking to the Pope, that if the Pope has so much, why is the Pope using the money for the poor to build the Vatican, to build the... Uh, to build the temple. If he has enough money, why don't he use his own money to build it and leave the money for the poor? You understand? So he took time to uh, to speak. Is it not the same thing happening in Nigeria now? It's the same thing that is happening. The same thing that is happening. Using the, the one who is rich is still asking for the poor to still bring in what they have. Bring the last cobble, bring the last thing they have so they can, you know, they can use it to use it for the temple or something. Or How the church is causing economic recession. Recession. Ah, powerful book. I've not read it. <laughs> yes, it's one, it's one of the latest ah. ones. I'm not sure if it's. In, I don't know if it's in Nigeria yet or not. Powerful. Yeah. So, what? So you have is insulted by ungodliness. You have a lot of things to be insulted by in Nigeria. What are the? What are Sa the? Yes. Give me a whole list of things that one could be insulted by in Nigeria. Or that you that you me, are insulted by actually. For me, every day I'm always insulted <laughs> on godliness. Because whenever I'm going to the shop, just on the as you drop from the motto, from the very point you drop, you are seeing somebody who maybe has his, his um is on the um, wheelchair or something. People who are begging on the roadside who are sick or something. You see all manner of sicknesses that you never thought of existed. Either somebody with a swollen leg. Or somebody who's uh, maybe someone who, who's got burnt, like there's a woman who her uh, eyes, is, you know, from here down half is gone. So uh, every day you just bring one person out because they are seeking for support. So if people don't support them at the at the bus stop, they go from shop to shop, you know, begging out with my, with my girlfriend that CEO, CEO, come on, you know, asking for arms. So from that bus stop down to wherever you are going to, there's a whole line of people. You see, people sitting down with that. You see some women. With three or four children, and I'm asking that, uh-uh, 
this man that, uh, that is pregnant, didn't you see that you are poor? He, you got pregnant for the first one. He did not stop. Second one, third one. Four. You can see a woman on the floor with five small children. And I'm like, how, how far? How far? Didn't you know that you could not take care of them? Still, yeah, you still continued. Four, five, six children. And you're on the floor sitting down and looking for someone to come and you know, support you and you know, help you. And then just like that, you see one, one situation or the other right from there. We're, we're not scarce of it. All. It's, full, it's full everywhere. Every single corner of it is everywhere. Just leave your house and walk one meter. You'll see somebody <laughs> with one. This thing. See, or if, see, if you don't see that one, you can see some people that are, they just come to you and say, um, Sal, we came to this side. Oh, we don't have transport money again. No. Oh. That we have lost to. Ah, uh, you're like, wait, you came down here, did not, did not put money or what? So there, there is. <laughs> we need, we need those ten thousand NGOs that we, <laughs> we need our, 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 that you plan to to bring to the country. So everywhere there is there is problem. Every every place, every every corner. There is, so for me, I'm always when I come when I come out in the morning, I'm like, wow, so so much. Where, where can one start from? Where can one start from? That there are two people who are in this in our area now. Those two people, they're just, I don't know whether they're mad or they are crazy or something, but literally they're eating from the dustbin or something, or, you know, they're just walking, they just see them walking around the street from money looking for just, they're just barely just living. So and everybody are looking at them, but continue with their buying and selling. Everybody just continue life, and this is not a, it's, for, it's us. If you can tell us, say, see what, see that guy. It's not a new thing. It's a, it's a common uh, scene in this, uh, in this area in uh, in Nigeria. Basically, you see it everywhere. You see but it, it everywhere. means that people are no more insulted. Yes, people are no longer people. I think in Nigeria, what happens is that people, people, people are not insulted. People make fun of it, or people are busy busy with survival. People are just trying to take care of the farm. People are trying to take care of their relatives. People are trying to just, you know, see to make make, end, make end, ends meet. People are, that's what people are really interested in. People are not really interested in, or except it's my brother or my sister, but people are not really interested in, oh, let's, you know, help this person. Let's help this person. People are just interested in, I beg go see today, or let's try, you know, see how Nigeria, how bad Nigeria is. Let's try and just try and find something that, you know, have money down or something or in take care of ourselves. So everybody's busy just day to day trying to survive for themselves that they have no time to look around them and see, okay, this guy has problem because people already think that I already have enough problem for myself. Too much problem at home. Everybody has his own problem. So why would I leave my own problem and try to help you? Help your people. And then we'll have this thing in Nigeria that people don't trust each other. What if I help you and you are a witch? Or what if you're not a serial, you're not a real madman? People can ask you, are you sure this guy is <laughs> are you sure this guy is really crazy or something? Or people who, instead of instead of giving you money, they'll use the money to buy something, they give use the change to give you because if they, they believe that they give you the raw cash, you could use it for diabolical something. Or so people have different kind of views. So that prevents them from wanting to help people who are they believe that maybe they are into they might be they might be diabolic people or something. So that now keeps them away from helping. They say, I've, I've given offering the church now. I've done my own this thing now. So it, people, people don't want to participate in taking care of people because of many excuses that they have. So with all those, because I was even thinking when you started talking about walking just one meter from your house and you begin to see all situations, I, begin, I began to say that, okay, so it means you don't even need to be insulted then. Everything, I mean, you don't need, I didn't need to write this book that uh, you need to be insulted by God. Because the reason I wrote the book is that people, so that people will begin to see everything that is wrong around. But in Nigeria, you don't need, any, you don't need to struggle to begin to see. Eh? You see every time, either you like or you don't like. But, they st but I now, through the thing you just said now, I realize that it's in Nigeria they even need this book the most because they are, not, they are no longer insulted. They see, but they, they have become indifferent. They are... The, and uh, they have become you no, know, they have separated themselves from what they are saying. So, and that is what brings about hatred, lack of love, and um, hard heartedness. So, this book then has to be read by everybody so that everybody will begin to notice what is wrong and to begin to, we need to begin to return empathy and, uh, and um, compassion back to our people because right now it's like they have thrown away compassion and empathy uh through the window 
Yeah. I also think that in our country, Nigeria, that godliness has been redefined. People don't think, they don't associate godliness with trying to solve a problem in society. Godliness is more like, how, how many number of hours do you pray? Or are you always are you in a service unit or are you faithful in the church or something? So like I have a friend that told me, said, oh, for national transformation is not the work of a Christian. Leave that thing alone. Christian is just, you know. So people don't think that um, godliness is involved, has to, has to do anything with, you know, addressing uh, something in society. Just, you know, you are you are a, you are a prayer warrior, you are a, a Bible, a walking Bible, you are, you know, just those basic, just, just those um, things about being a prayer warrior, a Bible study or something. So that's what people see as you are godly. But to say that you want to, the other thing maybe is that that is the work of, because like the very first time that I started hearing this thing, I started speaking out on Facebook. People, my, someone called me, someone that created before me in the school, university, as a pastor. He called me and they were trying to convince me because I did a post and I wrote that um, if you're calling, I think I wrote that if you are called to, if you are called to, um, if you are called a doctor, thing, focus on it, focus on doing your hospital work and stuff, something like that. So he now called me that CEO, why would you say that like that? Why you say something like that? That uh, why are you discouraging people from going to the church? So he was saying that that is not that. See, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, you can be involved in those NGO work. That is a, it's not the Christian work. It's not um, something that is God. It's just it's something that even the ungodly can do. Ungodly people, um, uh, this thing. Bill Gates is involved in philanthropy. Mazuka begging. So, this, and these are not believers. So there's nothing really, you understand what I'm saying? There's nothing so, what makes it? It's not a, it's not a God, something, it's, not, it's something that even people that don't know Christ can do. So he was trying to show him from the scriptures and trying to take me down to the scriptures that see, this is not really the assignment of the Christian, that the assignment <laughs> of the minister is this, 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 so that the fivefold and you know, trying to I was trying to really a long conversation on, on Facebook, trying to show me that see from the Bible read they had a meeting that this is not what it this is not the focus or something about the as a as a that's the one the gospel of a Christian or something that your work is to share. So you know, and I try to tell them that no, these are the things, these are also this is part of this is godliness. That the Bible, even all through the scriptures, God was speaking about defending the poor. Taking care of the widow, taking care of the orphan. This is scripture for yourself. I was Jesus Christ said, I was hungry. You did not feed me. I was naked. You did not clothe me. I was in prison. You did not visit me. So he personally, he made a personal, I myself, I was hungry. And that was the things that he asked them at the last day. I was hungry. You did not feed me. You were passing by me. You did not, see, you did not notice me. So that's how that's. What I try and still debate and argue that you know that's not what the Christian you know trying to and godliness in our in our Nigerian society is not does not involve you know trying to address something that's going to society or a problem or something. It's just basically the church pray, reading your Bible or doing all those um, Christian domestic chores or something like that. Wow. So Christians as are seeing all those things that are wrong in the society and they're just passing by, right? Passing by. When we're going to, even on the way to the, this, um, the Catholic church that is here, this, the first, uh, one of the major Catholic church here, every Sunday, once you go there, from the bus stop down to the church, are all filled with beggars. And as you are passing around the place, they are going to meet you and trying to hold your hand and make you smile or make you, and people just try to push them away or you know, don't listen to them or ignore them. You see small, small children who will come and say, you know, touch your hand and, you know, make you feel so that at least you give them 15 or whatever you could give them, you know, trying to, or people, don't, people are not interested. Who just, you know, walk by them or drive by them and go to the mass when they are done. People are already, you know, people are already trying to dismiss back to their place, rush to their cars or something, or get ice cream and buns and dis disappear or something, or, you know, <laughs> find their... In fact, one of the things that I wrote to the parish priest was that, because in the Catholic Church, we have what they call St. Vincent de Paul. Now, St. Vincent de Paul is a saint that was concerned about poor people. So that's the, that's the, that's the society. It's called St. Vincent de Paul Society. So that society is focused on helping the poor. So now I wrote to him, I said to him that, see, St. Vincent de Paul, when we come for mass, they will do first offering, second offering, do all the uh, raising offering, launching, everything within tithe, first fruits. Then after the mass, St. Vincent de Paul will not carry metal boxes and stay outside and carry stone and heat. Give to the poor, give to the poor, give to the poor. 
That is after the mass, after you have drained people all their money, what do, do you expect to now dump something inside the uh, metal box? Because you have already done three offerings plus all the fundraising, and now people are going, people are rushing back to their cars, they're rushing back home. You now put boxes out there and tell people to support the poor. Nobody will support the poor because you are showing them that that is not the focus. Because you did first, second, third offering, none of them is going to the poor. They're all going to the bank account and to the banks. We are not using the last, the last, the after mass. Everything is ended. People are, there's everywhere scrapped around. People are rushing out of the doors. And you are now putting it and saying, bring money for the poor. So only like, only like 1% will dump anything inside. In fact, what I do is that I take only like two offerings. I give my first offering in the Catholic church. Then the second one, I specially keep it for the boxes outside. Because they are not using those ones inside. And people are already... People are already, they, they, they are, church is already over. Mass is already over. They're not thinking about mass again. They're thinking about let home. And you are saying, help the poor, help the poor, come, 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 help the poor, help the poor, help the poor. Everybody, nobody's really, they don't have anything to give again. They've already given all they had. And that is where the need is most. That is the, that, the money that you dump in those boxes are the money that will really go to work and help people around us. And that is where the, the list is given. The list is given there. Give this thing. This list is given in those boxes. The more is given inside, but the more that's given inside is not going to help those people who are around. Only very, only like in one or two masses that they talk about the poor, and then few people come out to come and help them. So even basically, our practice shows that the poor is not our focus. The poor is not our. Is not what we are really interested in. So that's 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 also is a very serious issue. There is somebody that went to Nigeria and one of those boys was also running after her in the street of Lagos. I've seen this kind of, I've heard this kind of stories a few times. Recently, I also saw another one on, on video. Uh, the boy was running uh, after these Nigerians who came on holidays. So they changed his clothes, they dressed him and sent him to school. He was not going to school, he was just roaming the street. And there is another person from a DSA family who also had a, a situation and an example like this. But what you are telling me is that those boys are always there anyway. And that Nigerian yeah. Christians and everybody, they don't even, they don't even talk, they don't even stop, talk less of take, take, taking them home or taking them to, to school. Yes, but there are even people who are, I, I don't understand those people, those the women especially, I don't understand them because sometimes you go, when I'm going to the market, I see newborn babies, they just, newborn child, they are holding outside, you know, on the floor, sitting down on the floor, begging for money. I'm asking, why did you, you know, is it that these men that are impregnant, you don't understand that you are not, you don't have the means to take care of them, but you still, you know, receive those babies. So you have fresh born. So Every just like people are giving back, people are giving back to more and more of those people, and they are flooding society every day. Every day. They're just looking for going around, hawking. You could see a child of four years carrying pure and hawking or carrying orange and pineapple and hawking around the road, trying to you know survive because the everything the economy is hard or something. So everybody just trying as far as you can, you can walk, you can. So five years old is going taking other fish, uh, fried fish to go and sell or something. And even the parents don't see it as an issue. They just see it like, you come back to school, drop your bag, change your clothes, carry, they have prepared it for you already. Either carry a camel or something and, you know, go and hawk and bring the money back. This money is that you make, just reason and pay your school fees and take care of you and, you know. So everybody thinks that it's just the normal thing. Nobody sees anything wrong, wrong, wrong with it. So nobody's... Nobody really insulted by that kind of uh, ungodliness that is in our society today. But some of those people who go to your church, are they well to do? In the church? Ah. Hey. <laughs> These are mega men. I live very close to Alaba International Market now. These are the top. <laughs> in fact, that is why that is why they that's why they raise those offerings. Because in, in, in one service. Just one ma after the um, three of the millions. These are ah, uh, sir. These are well to do, <laughs> well, well to do men. We, men. People that are doing import. In short, they call and say importer and exporter. These are these are importers and exporters that 
exporting a truck and um, nine thirty feet, sixty feet truck everywhere. The whole the whole Alaba is choked with truck people are containers that are coming from the sea and they're exporting and uh -uh. no space yes, sir. People are <laughs> no space. So uh, it's not that those children that you say are coming to hold their hands, it's not that the people don't have money to give them then. People have enough money to give them. In fact, I was talking to my friend and said and said to him that if people we can just it's as simple as this that if just one fan, one shop can adopt just one person, we're enough to solve every issue. As if we don't need. In fact, the road here is very terrible, and these people are doing business so terrible, so bad. You can't live here by it. You, if the distance from my house to the uh, market is like 15 minutes, but every morning you can spend like 40 minutes because of the tight road and bad road and everything. So I'm saying that it will not take them. In fact, every year, when they come to ask to collect, the government comes to collect money from the shop, I think one, 1,000, like they make millions because you can't, the number of church, uh, shops here and is in their thousands. And these are well-to-do, well, this is the major market now. Everybody's coming here to come and buy. So anybody you're dealing with here, most of them are Igbos and because Igbos have a um, Catholic foundation. So every one of them is, investing themselves in the uh, the Catholic Church, the St. Patrick Catholic Church here. So that's where they're all based. That is where they are. They are. So these are well-to-do people, people who are fine and good and going. So, but they don't think that, they don't see it as something that they just, uh, the, the way they see things like, you know, just give to the church, participate in the church. And that's what even the priests are, are, are teaching and, and, and preaching, basically. That's even the preach and teach. These days now, very few times given for the homily. Major times given to it to raise um, offering or something. So just like few minutes to just try and just uh, explain what the uh, gospel reading is. And then in the many time, they must have one program or the other that they want to anchor. And so that is, so these are well to do people, people that can take care of that can take care of the people. So but they are not insulted by ungodliness. I know insulted, sir. I'm not insulted. They're not insulted. They just buy. In fact, some people say they don't like to see those things. They just try to close their eyes to it because you know you feel irritated or you feel offended or something. So they don't want to see those things. They just want to you know pass by and go to wherever they're going to or take a different route or something. They don't want to associate themselves with any, anything like that. They just want to live their their normal life and their comfortable life. So they're not insulted. Nice. Tell, okay. tell me some of the lessons that you, you took away from this book. Okay, the very first lesson I took in this book is that anger is a positive force. That we should not dismiss anger. First of all, we should, we should be able to know. It doesn't matter. Like If you read through those heroes that I talked about, William Wilberforce was, was in comfort. His family was not poor. He was well educated. He had all he had. He was comfortable. Martin Luther, who spoke about the sale of indulgences, he could make money from it too. He could join his colleagues and sell indulgences and make money from it too and, you know, take care of himself. So all those people had Moses that he spoke about in the book. Moses was in the palace. Moses had it going for him. He could pretend that he was never um, an Israelite or something and, you know, enjoy the comfort in the palace. So, but he did not, he will not do that. He will not accept that. He chose to identify with those who are suffering, those who are insulted. So I think that it doesn't matter because most people who might be hearing us today are in comfort and in, that things are going fine for them. Everything is going well for them. But we should not just say because things are going well for us that we will not look out and say, see, oh, even things are going well for me, but things are only going well for me so that I can help those things are not going well for. You understand? So even though things are going well for you, even though you are comfortable, even if you have everything going for you, even if you have the money that you have a roof over your head, you have money in your account, you have everything going for you, still yet, step out. Because I don't understand how you can be a Christian. Because even Jesus Christ left heaven. We left the comfort of heaven. We left everything in heaven to come down on earth and take flesh and become a sinner just for us. He took those stripes. He was insulted. He was spat upon, everything upon him because he wanted to set us free. He wanted, he wanted to feel our pains. We have a high priest that can be touched. So also, I think every Christian, every single person should accept that kind of lifestyle. It doesn't matter where you are, how, whatever you have, calm down, bring yourself down, see that you elevating people, you setting people free, is that, that is how you can become significant and how you can become great. 
So I'm saying that I, for myself, I know that I have some level of comfort. I know that my mom has done well for me. That has done well for me. I have a roof over my head. But every single day, I remind myself that I, myself, I have a goal. I have a plan to house those people who are outside. I have a plan to clothe them. And the little I can do now, I'm doing and helping those I can help. But I know that as time goes on, as I progress, that I'm going to do it even in a much, much larger scale than what I'm doing now. That's what I'm preparing myself for. So constantly, I'm reminding myself of the plan and vision and goal of, of God for my life as a Christian, which is to help and set other people free. So for me, it just reminds me that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what you have now because we are all praying and saying, oh God, help me. You know, oh God, move my business. Oh God, you know, I need help. But whatever help you get, you should also use that help to help others. So that's, that is the way I'm building my life. I'm seeing myself as someone who's going to help other people. So who's not going to live for myself who is going to live for others. Because it doesn't, it doesn't matter what, how many things you acquire here on earth. One day you go, one day you pass, and somebody else will acquire all those things and enjoy them. So why don't you invest your life in helping and living for others? So that's what this book challenges me to see and to do. Insulted by ungodliness. Yes, sir. The ability to feel insulted by the fact that we are passing by those children, by the fact that there is so much poverty in our society, by the fact that there are so, many, so much injustice going on, the ability to feel insulted that, no, this thing shouldn't be. What about the Jews? They are in their cars. They are also passing by all those rich people, I mean poor people. Okay. Only if they can tell the people the truth. Only if they can just tell the people and the truth and say, okay, see, this is the way it should be done. Just teach and train the people. Like, I, I believe that if I had known these things a uh, long time before now, I would have done quite a lot. I would have done even much more because I know the time where, whereby I had a lot of money on my hand. Because that time, I, my mom, my dad, ever was sending me money and then I was, you know, I was in school. You know, I, how much should I spend a day? So if I had known that this was because for me, I, like, I was talking with uh, Maya Wasson um, before the program. Were you, going and to, we're were you going to churches those days too? Were you a believer? Which, years back. Yes. I, I told you, sir, that I schooled in Faith Academy now, you Community know, University now. Me, I know, but you have to tell our, our audience. Okay, okay. Ah, from, when, from secondary school, when you are a student of Faith Academy, you must go to Faith, uh, Faith Tawanaku every Sunday, first service. After the first service in Tabernacle, we also come back to school for another service again. Every week at least, we do at least five or, five or six services. Five or six services. So I was a regular, I was a regular, even right from growing up too. Growing up, while I was in, uh, in Catholic Church too, we were regular, going to block rosary, going for masses, going for penance, going for confession, going for attending all the programs. So I was going, I was going to church all, all this time. No, the reason so, why I'm saying, not... the reason why I'm asking is because you've been going to all these kind of churches and you never were told yeah. that you are the answer to all the ungodliness. And you are never told that you have to be insulted by all the things that are happening around you. I told, sir. Which never, means... I was never, I, I was only thinking about Okay, oh, let me multiply my money and multiply my income. Let me be faithful. <laughs> let me try and be faithful so that, because I was thinking, because I, I really had passion for, because I was thinking that, see, maybe this is the way God has designed it. So I wanted that. I wanted to really, I already planned myself because <laughs> I, 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 was, <laughs> I was calculating God. I, so I, I had so many teachings. One of the teachings I had was that you plan, you will tell yourself how much you need per month. So if you need that thousand naira per month, then we should be sowing a seed of at least five hundred naira so that when you when you multiply by hundred fold, you're able to cover for the expense you need for it. So I, I was I was going to permutations and combinations. So that's I was that was the life I was, I was just that's what I was planning to live. I was planning to be faithful as much as I can, so that everywhere the thirty, the sixty is coming from left, coming from right, so that I can take care of money. I don't want to be bothered about money. So I had to just settle my philosophy about money, and that was the idea I had. So I wanted to concentrate on, you know, um, uh, preaching or something or things like that. 
So, but I never knew that that we need to be insulted by ungodliness. We need to think about the society. We need to help people and touch people. And you know, whatever people are passing through, feel it with them and help them and speak out and stand out and speak up for justice. In fact, when I started doing those things in school, the funny thing happened was that in, when I was in uh, when I was in the university. So later on, I think it was around uh, 300 levels. So I started uh, finding out the truth for myself. Then I wanted to leave the school. I wanted to drop out from school. So when I told my mother about it, she was like, what? She was heartbroken. So I, I thought, don't worry, I'll stay back in school. When I stayed back, I started discovering so many other things. So I said, okay, I will be in this school, but I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to do something different. So at that time, they were supposed to elect the leader for our service units. So they elected, they were, the plan was to elect me. So when they elected me, they were doing interview. So they interview me, they're not asking me questions. This is why the, uh, the spiritual, the pastor of the school or something, the chaplains of the school. So they started asking me questions. So I was not giving it to them hot and spicy. I told them, no, this is not the way we're going to do it. This is the way we're going to do it. So they were, <laughs> wow, it's total blackout. Can you see me, sir? I blackout. see your glasses. Your, okay. glass, your glasses are sh sh okay. shining. Okay, I think those two are on the generator. I don't know. Is that Nepa? Yes, Nepa. Nepa has gone. So I'm waiting for Jen now. But they have tried. Try. Try. We don't know. We They tried. What do you say? I said they have tried this over an hour, they have kept the light, so I will still applaud them. They tried today. <laughs> <laughs> if you have one, one hour of light, you still thank them because they have done one that got to have even 15 minutes, you have to. It's not it's not it's not easy. To have one hour, you have to appreciate them. <laughs> At least around nine or ten in the night, we expect them to come again. <laughs> well, uh, let me use this opportunity to make a few announcements. Uh, for people who are watching us, uh, we want to say thank you so much. You see, we are uh, being a partaker of Nigerian realities, even here, sitting in Europe. <laughs> you say thank you so much for uh, staying with us. Uh, we are hoping that uh, Ofo Buike will be back. Will be back soon. He's hoping that some somebody will put on the gent over there. So maybe he's gone. Maybe he will go and do, try to do something about the light because we can't even see the glasses anymore. <laughs> so uh, while he's gone or while he's trying to find a solution, I'm going to make a few announcements. So those people who are who have not been able to get their own copy of this book, uh, Moses Generation versus Joshua Generation, <laughs> I'm thinking of this Nigeria. Please go to you, go to Amazon, and when you get to Amazon, go Nada Mutira was Go to Amazon, and uh, you will be able to find a book for at least till next week. Between now and next week, you'll be able to find it for three dollars. So t for three dollars, you'll be able to get the book, and from next week, it will be twenty dollars. But this is about the future of the church. It's a prophetic book about the future of the church and the, the kind of people that will be able to build a new country. The people that will usher in a new Nigeria and a new continent and a new world. Only the Joshua generation people will be able to do that. But the old generation people, the Moses generation, unfortunately, you know, we, I mean, we, maybe fortunately, we have to thank God for them and let them, you know, go, not die in the wilderness, but let them go home peacefully why we uh, nurture and raise up this new generation of uh, Joshua generation. So that's the latest book I have, but the book we are reviewing today is called Insulted by Ungodliness. So this is a book that is meant to awaken your heart, your soul, your spirit to the realities around you, to the realities of the world around you, and so that you have compassion and empathy. And, uh, and fight for justice, um, you know, in the world that you live in. Maybe there are some people over there who might be willing, who might be willing to add, to contribute to our discussion. If you want to contribute to our discussion, you want to call to the program, you, this is the normal way. Just go to Facebook Messenger. When you get there, look for Move Agents. Move Agents. And Move Agents, just write. 
that you would like to contribute or you would like to call, and then we will call you back. So go to Facebook Messenger, look for Move Agents, and then um, yeah, t just write, drop us a line that you would like to call, and we will call you back. So um, you know, the, the electricity is gone, but I think he got it back already. So we are going to. We, uh, yeah, I think the light is not so bright as it was before, but at least we can see him now. Before we are not seeing him at all. What happened? Electricity is back. No, he won't generate him. <laughs> so you are so sure that he cannot come back so fast. <laughs> no, Abba. <laughs> we'll, we'll share the light. So after this area, another area, then it comes back again. Oh wow. Well, you know, let me uh, ask you about being a DSA platform member in Nigeria, being a follower of Dr. Sonda Adelaja in Nigeria. What does, that, what does that look like? What does that sound like? How are you people surviving with all this knowledge you are getting and with seeing the opposite all around you and, you know, seeing everything just the against? How are you surviving that? Well, I, mean, I think for, like I said earlier on, first of all, when I, um, with what I'm learning constantly and understanding, then there's always this um, push to go and, you know, try something and start something and do something. So, but when you go out to the field and start doing something, then you see more reason why, take out some more time and study this thing further, you know, understand it very well first before you go and, you know, progress and do what you're doing. So for me, like, when I started the, um, the group, talking to the people and sharing with them, and I saw that even me, I still need to do some more homework. So I said to myself that I need more time with myself to understand these things even more and better before I even start going out to talk to the people. So I'm just telling myself that I just giving myself more time and give myself the discipline required to study and understand and take it time. Because when you go out there, you really you need to be engaging. There's no time for you to start, you know. You need to have everything clear, understand it clearly, so that you can really explain to the people and carry the people along. So that's the, that's what I, it, I, I, I feel about it, that first and foremost, take out your time to study every single thing, all the messages, all the series, go over them over and over as much as you can, so you understand them get them, understand them completely, then you now go out there and begin to engage and do the things that you want to do, taking them step by step and, you know, keeping yourself um, keeping yourself updated, keep learning, keep um, studying, and then you can bring out that the change that you want to see. Okay, now, you, when you are talking about the realities of uh, desperation in Nigeria, that when you go to the street, you see all these children and everybody and the poor, the uh, disabled and things like that. And you said, if you are not careful, w you will just be wondering, what can I do alone? What can one person do? Yes. I cannot, I mean, you just be, it's almost like, you know, uh, disillusion. You'll be, you know, disappointed that, or you'll be, you'll be tired of even trying to do something. So the answer to that is that whenever something is endemic, which it means that it has a systemic nature it means it is overwhelming it's not just a singular you try to resolve questions or problems as an individual only when they are coming in units or they are singular or one in a once in a while kind of thing but when they are endemic like that and they have already taken a life of, of its own on themselves uh, then you don't try to respond like that like emergency because otherwise you will break down. It will kill you. And, you, you know, instead of you resolving the problem, the problem will kill you. So how do you resolve that kind of situation? How do you respond when uh, you live in a society when the problems are so many everywhere, you don't even know where to start, which you, I mean, you will never even have enough money to resolve them. That is why we call, we call something systems. So in, it is in that kind of situation that you build systems. And we are going to talk a little bit about that as also this week uh, because we are starting the HMT tomorrow. So, uh, so from there, you, you know, if you, for example, if you have a burden for those children, a system has to be built, which means we have to stop 
No, don't be rushing to pick something, but uh, sit down and build systems. And you know, there is there are teachings I have about in HMT on how to build systems. So that's what you are do what you are saying that you need to learn more. And by the time you learn to build systems, that's what we do we do here in Ukraine. For example, when we saw that there are problems of drug addicts, we built a system that now is over maybe 1,000 centers all over the world that have been built. That's a system. It's, you know, but, but you have to sit down. And the same thing when we, there were so many hungry people or poor people here, not now, but before, people who couldn't eat, you know, three square meals, almost like Nigeria. So we started a system also that allowed us to feed 2,000 people a day. And then when we, there were also children like this in the street in Nigeria, homeless children here, sorry, in this country, there used to be 100,000 of them in the street. We started a system. Now you don't see them in the street. They're, the system resolved them. So when you have uh, problems like in Nigeria that are everywhere, that are so overwhelming, the approach to it, so resolving them is systemic or systematic approach. You need to learn to build systems. And so when I said, when I'm coming to Nigeria, I'm not rushing right now, I'm still here, but when I come to Nigeria, that's when I was talking about that 10,000 NGOs, because then that would be a system that would be able to attack and address those kind of situations. So just for you to, just a little, uh, a little thought there. Yeah. yeah, so what does, it, what does it seem like to be a, a DSA family member, learning all these things and then seeing that everything is totally against you? Yeah. I think when you, when you learn all these things and you see, first of all, your heart is broken because you're seeing that there are so many problems out there. And with all that you know, with all that you are learning, you are like, how do I start? Yeah, so every single day, I always, I always ask myself that, wow, what, where do I begin from? How do you start? What, where are you going to, where, where are you going to start from? You know, then you have to co and like say, comfort yourself and encourage yourself that life is a process that is step by step, and that you are making progress. As far as you are educating, you as far as you are, because it's not something you just do once. As far as you are taking the daily steps, you are in line, you are in course. So you just have to check whether you are in course. Whether you have, you have not derailed. So as far as you are in course, you are making progress. Either you are studying or you are learning or you are equipping yourself. You know that one day, those problems you see out there, you can, I really comfort myself that I know that one day these problems I see out no more. And then how do I, how do I, how am I, because of the steps I'm taking, early progress making, decisions I'm making day by day, disciplines I'm practicing and all those things comfort me and tell me that I know that one day I will get to that my goal. That's my big goal and big vision to help these people and to lift them from, uh, from the streets and leave them from begging. So that's basically what, what it feels like to be DSC Fuller One. Is it lonely? Yes, very, very lonely. <laughs> very, very lonely. I have a friend that he used to tell me before about, I don't know, about you and everything. Because I think he was where the, where the church he was going to, the pastor is always talking about you or something like that. So, but le later on, instead of having arguments, because I started following you later, because he was following you <laughs> earlier on. So, I, I came later when the heat was on. So, when I came, when I, when I came later, so I started talking to him about it. Said, I said, he said, he knows me, but he said, that man, only his old messages are good. His new ones, don't listen to them. I said, but no, his new messages are the real me are the messages that are in So, he said, happy. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of having conflict, so he was he he was at least uh, last time he came, he was able to go to the market and buy some of your books and still really show you just like that. But it's not too. He still has a lot of why We try to avoid any argument or something, but it's not. It does. It's not too clear about. It's just. It's just let's just leave everything. Let's just. So but I think it's very very lonely. You, are, you find the other day when the books started to talk about it. So when we went to buy a book. Buy buy books. Some of your books are there. So we're not we're not selecting your books out. Then one of the person, one of the as a man that was there that was buying books, he now say, Ah, Doctor Sonda Delaja, that man, that trouble man, that one that's giving everybody trouble. Say <laughs> 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 so, that troublemaker. So when my friends are laughing, he said, Ah, how is he a troublemaker? So they don't you don't know that man, he's a troublemaker big time. Bro. So now <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm laughing, laughing, laughing. <laughs> so that's all the guy was saying. Troublemaker, troublemaker, troublemaker. My friend was not laughing. But troublemaker to oh, for, for the geos now. <laughs> troublemaker for the church, not to the geos. For the church in general. Yeah, <laughs> church in general and then Christianity. <laughs> so that is, that's how they see it as. They're a troublemaker. I say, okay. <laughs> One person wrote me the other day and said, uh, Pastor Sunday Adelaide, hello, good day. I, I'm, I'm based in Nigeria. You don't know me, but I don't know you too, but you have started a tsunami. You, there is a tsunami going on in Nigeria here oh, that this tsunami that you have started, only God can help us. <laughs> I don't even know what tsunami they are talking about because I personally, I have the impression that, because they are not listening to me now. They are not listening. So what will happen when they begin to listen? When they, they, all these messages will be on radio, television, newspaper, everywhere. Now there is no, it's not even on ground yet. And they are already saying, I am a troublemaker, I started tsunami. What will happen when I get there? Well. They will have to run, we have to run them out of town, I guess. Yeah, yes, sir. So, uh, then, you, you, I'm sure uh, you also, because insulted by ungodliness is closely connected to the Elijah challenge that I did. I don't know if you heard about the Elijah challenge or you saw the Elijah challenge. Yes, I saw the Elijah challenge. Yeah, so is it not the same thing, that is, I mean, in that direction, you know, you, if you have read this book by that time, you will understand what I'm, exactly what I was doing. That and, that is just uh, yes. challenging. Uh, so what what was the effect, both on you people who follow me and on the people who hate me and <laughs> don't understand me? <laughs> that like that challenge was a big blow <laughs> because I, in that video you were challenging all the geos and everything. I think it's just uh, we're challenging geos and saying to them that they should call on their God. They should they should call on their God that if they think you are wrong. <laughs> they should call on their God to come and you know defend them or you know defend them if if they think, if they think you are the one that is wrong they should call on their God to come and and defend them and they should call fire down and certainly none of them was able to call the fire down or do anything so it shows that basic um, basically what we're doing is the right thing we need to what we're doing we're on the right step on the right path and what we're doing is going to achieve great results we are going to the result and the goal we are, we, are, we are aiming for will be achieved. Will be achieved. Wow, beautiful! I think we have a call. Do we have a caller? Hello. Ah, okay. Somebody wants to call now. <coughs> All right. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know any other person in in town in Kiev? I mean, in Lagos there that is also reading these books or following the broadcast? Isaac. I know about Isaac and Isaac, my friends. Isaac, hello, Shola. Is he your friend? Yes, my friend. Okay. You connected? Yeah, we connected. We had a program last year in Artridge. Last year. Together? Okay. Yeah, we, together. I think we have a caller now. Hello? Okay. Hello, good evening. I want to get sir. something to change. Mutiro, you won't know. Hello? Need this. Hello, good evening, sir. No, Flushy Mutiro. Not of Nutri Mutiro, but the Japanese wife. Hello? Hello, good evening. Hello? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Who is calling? Hello? Who is calling from where? This is Favor calling from the US. Favor? From what, what part of US is that? Arizona. Arizona. Wow. Okay. Nice to hear your voice, uh, Favor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, um, ma'am. I'm just calling to make a little contribution based on what the gentleman is talking. Yes. Um, when it comes to Nigeria having a remnant, actually, I don't know if there is still remnant. Wow. Because we just came back from Nigeria 
few weeks ago, we went for an holiday. We just came back. And before we left, well, by the grace of God, I've called into this show before. I've been following for more than a year now. Okay. We were Anglicans from Nigeria, but when we got here, mm, we went into redeem. That is a story for another day. <laughs> but we were thinking the Anglican is still... Uh, it's still, yeah, it's still good. It's still okay. Yeah, but, but when we got there, myself and my husband could not even stand what they are doing. My God. The first fruit this guy is talking about in the Catholic Church is all in Anglican. Even after giving like four or five offerings, hmm. four or five offerings in Anglican Church, they still said there is one offering they want to give again. They say everything in your pocket, bring it. Uh -uh. In Anglican Meanwhile, Church. In Anglican Church. Meanwhile, they are fasting. These people are coming back for the fasting program. They don't even have the strength to walk home. My this God. priest said, everything in your handbag, bring it out. My God. So we looked at, I looked at myself, I looked at some other family that sat behind us. We were all like the troublemakers before we left before we left Nigeria, actually, we were a little bit troublemaker because the things they were doing wasn't really working well with us. That is why we went to ROCCG when we arrived in America. <laughs> but hey, it's just, it's just a mess. Nigerian church is just a mess. So it's only God that will deliver us. All of them are doing first fruits. They are sowing seed. And when I look at it, we're like discussing about it. I said, one of the major problems I'm seeing in this case is that the Anglican church priests were supposed to be paid salary at the end of the month. But guess what? They are only paying them 30,000 naira. Hey, what will that money work for a priest with children? So they have to do everything they have to do, raise all the money so that they can, you know, embezzle it. So I told, I told somebody that is very close to us, I said, hey, all of the, all you guys are all thieves. Because it's not the 30000 they are giving to you at the end of the month that you are using to fly abroad, do shopping, drive cars that even me that lives in abroad cannot even buy. Huh. So, hey, let's call it spade a spade. Hmm. There is no body here. If God will ask Nigeria, if he can see 10 righteous men, I don't think they have. Wow. I don't think we have 10 righteous men in Nigeria. Are we you serious? Faith. You know, everybody has been telling me, after coming back from Nigeria, they said there is no remnant. They said maybe they are there, but they have not seen it. Uh, I don't know. I didn't see any. Then when it comes to the area of uh, giving to the poor, the the church had the church is the major contribution then the the economic too because some of these people who stand by the church on Sundays or by the streets on the weekday. They are professional beggars. Hmm. So no matter what you give to those ones, I bet you they're going to come back tomorrow to beg again. Yeah. There is this guy, I grew up in that state right from my seven-year-old. I basically know this man. So when I drove past, I'm like, hey, is this man still begging? Wow. I slowed down and gave him money. And my, my niece says, sister, don't worry. I'm going to show you something on Friday evening. Hello? Yeah, my niece yeah, I'm hearing you. My niece said, don't worry, I'm going to show you something on Friday evening. I said, okay. So on Friday evening, she reminded me, around 6 o'clock. I said, hey, I'm not supposed to go out to say, sister, let me go show you something. Do you know we went to where this beggar lived? If you see his house, he's sitting down with his friend drinking, uh, what do they call it, Guinness. And this is a beggar. So it's even hard to help those ones who stand along the street and along by the church side to help them. They are just professional beggars. Wow. They are professional beggars. So that one is going to take the, I don't know, the nation to do something about it before you can get beggars off the street. They are, those little children, mm -mm, their moms are sitting near there watching them begging. That is what it. Then the one for the little babies, those newborn baby. Hey, they are all scam. They bring those babies to just beg. Wow. There is there is one um one we went to see, and he's saying 
it's orphanage, but then you don't blame them. They don't have money. They don't have food. So they have to use these babies to go to the roads to go back for money. Hmm. So I told her, I said, hey, if you are doing this in the cause of love and God called you for it, don't take these kids to the roads to go back. Just hold on and God will send people to you. I said, do you know me anywhere? He said, no. I said, I, I, I didn't even know you, but I just decided to visit so don't take them anymore. So that is one of the details I see in the area of begging. It's going to be hard, but I know there is nothing God cannot do to get beggars off the streets in Lagos, in Delta, in Oyo. Oh, man, it's going to be hard. So all of them so, are crooks, both beggars and the normal human beings. Everybody is a crook. They are all crooks. They are crooks. I bet you they are just they are professional beggars. A lot of people who, who agree with me. They are professional beggars who are just dead. This one I'm telling you about this guy. I was seven years old when I knew him. I'm 40 something here. He's still begging. He has mansion, but he's still begging. He does weekend party with his friends, eat and drink, but he's a beggar on the street. Wow. So if you don't know him, you will pity him, you'll be giving him money. Meanwhile, he's living large more than you that is giving him money. <laughs> so that one is going to take, I don't know, the nation to handle that. But for the area of the church, oh, I bet you God will have mercy. Like all I cried. I stayed, in, I stayed in Nigeria for five weeks. I only went to church for two Sundays because I couldn't stand it. Wow. I couldn't stand what I am seeing. They will tell you charity. After you put charity off free, they will tell you, oh, we need to raise money for the widows. 20 people should come outside and donate 10, 10 bag of friends. Where is the charity money we just gave in the offering now? <laughs> there is no way. My husband was looking. He didn't even put. He said he's not giving. Like me, when I went to the church, when they were talking of offering, I just looked at them. I didn't give nothing. Long somewhere, the lady was dancing. I just cited the lady. I told my wife, I said, this woman, I don't know. I feel like it. I... You feel like doing what? I think we lost our... All right, no problem. So, all right. Uh... Ofo Buike, are you still there? I'm there, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So I was telling you that if that kind of thing is happening in Anglican, I mean, Catholic Church, it means African don't go, Anglican don't go a long time. So that's a confirmation right there that in Africa, Anglican is even worse. You know, so the Pentecostals have brought corruption to all the mainline churches as well. Yes, the issues were not. This is the this thing. The bulletin. Can you see this, sir? The bulletin. Yes, yeah, bulletin. Uh, what so is you can see the tight. First fruit. I see first fruit. Prayer for first fruit thanksgiving. Now, wow. In a Catholic church. Yes, Catholic church. Wow. As the as the bulletin. Yes, they don't spoil. They don't spoil. They don't spoil town. They don't spoil country. St. Patrick's Catholic Church. Wow. Ah. Yes, man. So, what would you like to tell our viewers before we go? Because our time is over now. Join the generation of the provoked. Yeah. So, everyone should join the generation of the provoked. Let's get provoked. And that's what you said in the chat, one chapter of the book. Yes. We should not accept limitation. We should speak out. To join forces with like-minded people, we should pay the price and join forces with like-minded people. Just join the generation of the provoked. Find something in society that insults you, that provokes you, that, that makes you uneasy, and then be productive about it. Don't just complain about it. Find something, a talent, a resource that you have, and turn that insult, turn that provocation, and turn it to something, turn it to a thesis, turn it to a movement, turn it to 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 a NGO, turn it to something until and also you also you made it that we should persist, just like the unjust the story about the unjust judge. Persist until you see that problem resolved. Persist until you see that issue dissolved. Persist until you get the justice that's required. Stand on it. Persist until you see that thing that you are dissolved. This happened to me one time, one day, one day I, I did a post, and one of my friends from school wrote about me and said, the person on my wall that's always disturbing me is a phobic cocoli. When I saw that, uh, that comment, I was so angry. I saw what I'm going to do. I wanted to sleep that night. I said, no. That night, I did about 30 posts. 
to challenge. I said, if I'm disturbing you, disturbing you, I'm going to disturb you even 30 times more. And I want you to come out and speak again. So that I will do 100 times more posts. So I said, I'm not going to just allow this anger to die down. You have to turn this anger around and do even more posts until you cannot speak again. So I think that's what we should judge. We should persist until we see the justice. We get the justice required. We should keep talking. We should keep, we keep speaking out until we see justice being achieved, until we see that goal that we want being achieved. We should not, not, we should not give up. Let's not give up. So everyone that is watching today, I want to ask you to join this generation of folks. Join who are in stuttered and godliness, those who do something constructive to see a change in vision. Thank you so very much, uh, Ofo, Ofo. And uh, if you have not yet gotten that book, you have not yet read that book, Insulted by Ungodliness, go ahead and get your own copy. It's on Okada Books. Uh, it's on Amazon. Uh, it's a hot, hot, fire, fire kind of book like that. It will set fire in your bones and cause you to be provoked about all the evil things going on around. And of course, our last release right now, latest release of book, is Moses' generation versus Joshua's generation, talking about the new generation of people, of Christians, that, will, uh, that must arise in our continent, in our country, to bring the glory of the kingdom of God down. And uh, we're starting our HMT tomorrow, day after tomorrow, tomorrow. So, you know, be at a lot to watch us live on Facebook. We are going to be broadcasting and transmitting every all the major meetings. And also, uh, if you have not yet joined the mentorship program, go to my blog, sonadelajablog.com slash mentorship. Same with, uh, uh, if you want to come for the next HMT, go to uh, sonadelajablog.com slash HMT, History Makers Training. If you want to be receiving our messages on your WhatsApp and uh, telephone, nada mutiro wa you is our telephone number is plus three eight zero nine eight five nine six three eight three eight. Uh, so that is how you uh, you can send us your own telephone number, your uh, WhatsApp, and we will be able to be sending you the messages on a regular basis every day. Um, yeah, but I'll be coming back in the next 15 minutes to continue our series on leadership. A leader is a ladder. So that's what we are continuing in the next uh, few minutes. But from tomorrow, I guess, we are going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, we are going to go on break till after the HMT, till after the 7th. Then uh, uh, it's only after that that we are going to continue with the evening meetings, I mean, the next uh, programs. Most of the, from tomorrow, even at 7 o'clock this time, we will not do uh, the program. We are going to just be focusing on HMT. So we'll see you people. Thank you so much, Ofo, and uh, keep on the good job. And thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you in the next 15 minutes. Peace. <laughs>